Hi there, and welcome to this episode of the Everyday Millionaire Mindset Matters podcast, where I'm joined by my wife, Olympic mental performance coach, Stephanie Handlin Francie. In these episodes, Stephanie and I have a conversation about the different aspects of what we refer to as Mindset Matters, because we believe that for those who are awake, we are living in and through the most impactful time in history. Your view of the world is the filter for how you will experience the evolution and changing dynamics of it. Our intention is to provide you with ideas, nutritious food for thought, and some tools that you can use to help you in being your greatest self and living your best life. Listen in. Enjoy. Hey, folks. Welcome to the Everyday Millionaire Mind Set Matters podcast. This is Stephanie. Hey, hon. 2024. Happy New Year, everybody. We've got a great show lined up. Happy New Year and all the best of all good things to everybody that's listening. It's uh, a new year, a new opportunity and a fresh new slate. Well, isn't it though, right? It is a little bit of a fresh slate. As they say, you know, a new year does bring that hopefully some optimism. And, you know, a lot of the conversations that we've had over the course of the past year, and especially the last ones, which were, you know, when we theme 2024, clarity equals velocity is a bit of the theme. And there is a lot in that. There's a lot to unpack in that conversation. But for today, I want to, you know, we had a couple of different ideas, or I had a couple of different ideas about what we might title this and add to the theme, expand on the theme, if you will. And one of them that I came up with was reflect, regroup, and redirect, which to me is, you know, when you're looking at 2024 into a new year. Uh, we've done a show on completion. What are you leaving in 2023 and what are you taking forward with you? So for this particular you know, show and this conversation, I'd really like to just un unpack you know, how we see going into a new year, how you work with your athletes going into a new year, because to me, it's a perfect correlation of what you do with your athletes and what we do in life. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I think the biggest thing is that anytime there's something that comes to an end or comes to a close, it's really important to do um, just a regroup or a recalibration and look in a new direction. And I think if it's a season, it could be a year, it could be a lifetime, it could be a job, it could be just a project. So when we look at going forward, we, you know, use the analogy of a backpack, you know, all the rocks that are in the backpack all year, yeah. maybe it's just time to take one out at a time and look at it, reflect on it, see how it served you, maybe see how it no longer serves you and then decide what to do with it. Yeah. You, you know, when we worked with Dr. Paul Stoltz years ago, he actually had a pretty cool analogy, which was, you know you do spring cleaning, you might do your garage. And what do you do? You go into your garage and you empty it all out. You clean it up, you polish the floor, you clean out all the corners, and then you reset shelving. And then you look at it and you go, okay, what are we putting back in the garage and what are we leaving out? What are we going to put on the shelf and what are we going to you know, toss in the, in the bin or send to the garage sale? So it's kind of like you know, a new year is that opportunity to reset, to reflect, to reset, redirect, you know, regroup and decide what am I going to take forward into 2023 with me? How do I want it to look? And, you know, I'll go on a little bit of a tangent in a rant, which is you have to look at the year and say, okay, well, where the hell am I going? And that's really, I think, what is the best part of this conversation. You know, when you get in your car, for example, and you're going somewhere you've never been before, or maybe you've been there before, or you at least have some idea where it is. If you're in your car doing it, your GPS, the first thing your GPS says is, well, where are you? I need to know where you are so that I can tell you the best road to take. You know, what is under construction so you want to avoid that? Where are there uh, photo radar or radar traps or where there's construction? You know, there's these things that are going on that, you know, your GPS gives you direction based on where you say you want to go. And if we take the time to really look at the direction, you know, first off, we have to say, well, where is, where is it that we want to go? What is it we're working backwards from so that we can then create and set a path? And how we arrive at that path, well, that's a whole new conversation, but that's my kind of metaphor for it. What's your thoughts? Well, I agree. I mean, going back to the garage with Dr. Paul Stoltz is that 
one of the things that I don't want to step over is that when you start to clean things up and you start to go through things, it's going to get messy. It's going to get ugly. It's going to get dirty. And I will say that even when I clean my house, why does it get dirty first? And then I can stop. I can get frustrated and I can just go screw it and I'm not going to do it. Or I can just go, you know what? It just gets dirty first. It gets messy first because there's dust that's been sitting there for a while or things that I haven't moved for a while. So in order to really reflect on where I am and wanting to move forward, you have to sometimes sometimes go through a little bit of dust and dirt. I think that's such a great point. You know, it does. It gets messy. And when we look at what we're doing in life, whether it's business or our personal life, maybe relationally, uh, we want to clean some things up. It does get messy sometimes before we get to clarity. You know, sometimes the best outcomes in relationship are the tense moments of, you know, maybe it's an argument, maybe it's a, a blow up. And then you get through that kind of messy part of it. And the next thing you know, you come to a place of clarity and a place of understanding. And this goes back to, again, the theme of clarity equals velocity. And although that, you know, it's a kind of a funky saying and it's cool and what does it really mean? People like it. You know, they comment, oh, that's a great, that's a great quote. But you have to unpack that quote like so many, because what does it even mean? So first off, you have to look at what we like to refer to as the seven areas of life. And you don't have to look at all seven areas, but when we look at those seven areas, you know, relational, financial, vocational, familial, spiritual, physical, uh, mental. I don't know if I got all seven there in that list, but ultimately, and emotional. Yeah. So you have to look at all those areas and, you know, if you break it down by those, we'll say, call them swim lanes for now, or those buckets, if you will, it, number one, it isn't quite so overwhelming. Number two, you get really start to get way more specific. And that's where you can then look at it and say, okay, where do I need clarity in this particular bucket, whether it's financial or vocational, could be physical, uh, could be spiritual or emotional. You know, what is the load you're carrying? What is the stress level you're carrying? How much weight are you carrying? Or financially, what is your next investment strategy? Or how do you generate more revenue, more income? So these are all ways to break it down. And then the clearer you are, the smoother you can make decisions or perhaps the better the decisions are that you're going to be making because you have clarity. So before I expound on that any further, what's your thoughts? Well, again, you make a good point. And the reflection piece of that also, what lives before reflection for me is rest. Mm. And all of that, where you're going, you know, in the seven areas of life. And for me, I was trying to see what the top three or four are going into a new year or a new season. That's where I'm at right now. But what I've really realized is that before I can even reflect on where I'm at, I need to rest. And that's really, I think, what we've done over the last week or 10 days coming into this new year is that is taking some time to rest and, and connect with the our land and our dogs and, you know, just checking in with family and checking in with ourselves and our relationship. And that deep rest really has allowed me to start to open up. In, and you got me for Christmas, you got me an iPad. So I'm starting to learn how to use certain apps where I'm, my journaling has moved over from pen to paper onto this, um, it's called Notably. And I'm, I'm really enjoying it because as I move forward and I give myself that rest, I can start to reflect with more clarity. And when I can reflect on what is and where I'm at with rested eyes and with clarity, it's much easier not to bring on the anxiety or the nervousness or the grandiose, you know, big, hairy, audacious goals that, you know, most people will start the new year with. I don't, I don't really advise that. I said, let's start with rest. Let's go to reflection and then take a look at what area of life that we want to focus on and where we're going to go in that lane. Well, you know, and often it's in the rest that we can reflect and that we can find the creativity that doesn't necessarily come to the surface when we're busy doing things, you know? And so again, when we look back at clarity, I think you made some uh, interesting points along the way there is that clarity is actually being clear that, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, we need rest. We need to take a break. But that's a decision. That's a conscious decision going, hold it. You know, and, and rest doesn't necessarily, you know, a lot of people go, well, I'm going to go skiing. I'm going to go to the tropics. I'm going to go somewhere. That's doing. And that may 
sound like rest, but for some people it's not. You know, I'm going to suggest a busy mom or a busy dad. Well, if you've got four kids and you're hauling around or three kids, whatever, and you've got flights and packing and all the things to do, that may not be as restful as it sounds. When you get to the other end, perhaps, and I'm not suggesting that it's not, but what I am saying is around the clarity piece is what does rest look like for you? What do you really need to have the rest that you need to kind of step back and be able to take a breath, get that creativity, get some clarity, and then stop long enough to actually reflect and make some decisions of what you want to do and how you want to move forward. What are you working backwards from? And the most important part of this, gosh, I've learned it harder the hard way so many times over the years. What are you not going to take forward into 2024? What are you going to go, no, I'm done. And we have to remind ourselves that we carry that baggage, that backpack with rocks in it, as you uh, use that analogy. And it's time to clean it up. And this is a perfect milestone. A new year is a perfect milestone to do that. I look at the, each rock that I pull out of my backpack this week. And as I was doing some reflection on my own and taking a look at what I'm prepared to leave behind and what I want to bring forward. What I really got to is that I wanted to have a theme, not just, you know, the seven areas of life, but I wanted to have a theme for the year. And I, I do this every year, but over the last couple of years, my word, for example, has been the same for the last five or six years. And, and my word of the year, again, is peace. So when I use the reflection, the rest and the reflection and take a look at, you know, the seven areas of life, where do I need to go to have peace in my physical where do I know need to go to have peace in my emotional bucket? Where do I need to go to have peace in my mental bucket, in my relational bucket? So peace becomes my overarching kind of goal. But this year I drilled it down a little bit more. And in my journaling this morning, what came up was an underlying theme, which is going to be self-care. Whether that's in the physical, a mental, spiritual, emotional, whatever bucket's up for me right now is going to be driven by self-care. And that to me has been something that has been really in my life all, like all my adult life. You've been really great in that and helping me learn about self-care and taking care of my body and massages and nails and hair and all that stuff. But it's going a little bit deeper this year as I reflect and, you know, getting a little bit older and, and maybe a little slower. What do I need to do to take a look at my life in those six or seven areas, four, four areas right now, I think is all I can handle um, and really add the layer of self-care that I think is going to be very helpful for myself, but also for us going forward. Yeah. And I think it really is a case of a commitment to, I mean, this is a body of work that at some level we should be doing on a regular basis. Let's face it. You know, we have to stop and always in a, you know, life keeps happening and we have to stop and reflect and decide, you know, how we want to move forward. But ultimately the milestone of a new year is more of a bigger picture and saying, okay, where can I clean things up? When can I, or how can I do things better? And then start to say, well, what am I working backwards from now to your point? You know, you can only take so much on. So, Perhaps when you say, well, physically, I want to get into better shape. Well, that may be your primary, you know, your most primary focus for a year, depending on where you are health wise and what you how you see yourself and what you want it to be. I mean, that can eat up an hour a day, you know, five, six, seven days a week, depending on how you want to take it on. Are you going to train and are you going to work backwards from doing a triathlon or a marathon? I mean, all of those things take time. You know, we look at business decisions and for example, what are we going to do within our businesses? Now for us, you know, we're going through a big transition in business, you you know, in many aspects of what we're doing for a lot of reasons. 2023 was a tough year in a lot of ways. Well, we got our ass handed to us. Yeah, we did get our butts handed to us in we many. Got our, our to us. <laughs> and so, you know, so for us, we're going, okay, well, we're also in that phase of our life where we're redeciding what we want to do and how we want to do it. And, you know, that's for, for us, we have to take the time to reflect and make some big decisions. And that's kind of what we're into. So when we reflect, we have to, as a couple, regroup. 
I want to go back to a fundamental, which is, you know, clarity equals velocity and unpack that some more. So as we decide, for example, us as a couple, what are we going to do? What, you know, we've got three, actually four operating businesses that are going concern. We've got staff and we've got infrastructure and we've just got a lot of things going on. And in all of that, it can be a little overwhelming, a little stressful and, and, for me, I think it's really important to emphasize the alignment that you and I have to have. So we're not making decisions, you know, in a silo. You know, we have to actually align and go, is this the best direction for us in terms of our time, our energy, financially? You know, what are we doing and how do we want to do that? How do we want to take it on? And so in the aspect of clarity, although that may sound like business on the surface, in behind it, it's also relational. It's the team that I have or you have. It's the relationship you and I have in terms of how we function as a household. And then when we have that clarity of what we're working backwards from, and then some, I guess, a route to take, a plan that we're putting in place, that's where the velocity lives because once we take the time to do that, which is some heavy lifting, I think, up front. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, it takes, you have to walk and talk it through. And the way I am is that I have to talk things through. I can't carry it around in my head on my own. I have to be able to talk it through and get clear. Uh, what would you add to that? Yeah, it, it's heavy lifting because there's still two very individual and unique personalities involved with different much as we've been together forever, we have different expectations and different backgrounds and different ways of creating. I'm very much an intentional creator. I, I set intentions and then I, I do things very much from an intuition standpoint. I, I do write things down, but I know that when we get, I get a little bit caught up in the we conversation and, you know, we, we are going to do this and we are going to do that. But sometimes I step over the fact that maybe you want something different or maybe I'm looking at it differently. So I think Part of the heavy lifting that you're talking about is making sure that the people, the individuals, the human beings inside the couple or inside the partnership are also being heard and being um, have the space to gain clarity. And I think that's what's going to be so cool about our think tank coming up is that the focus is really on partnership, not necessarily marriages, but on on partnerships and, and how to do partnership in a way that each person is still a standalone human being partner in that, and it's a hundred, a hundred. It's not like a 50-50 kind of a thing. And I think part of that for us and where we butt heads and where we battle sometimes is that I really want to know what you want. And I want to be able to say, here's what I want and here's what I see and here's what I see us aligning on. Because one of the things you taught me early on in a relationship is that there's no compromise. You know, I was coming always from a place of, well, you know, I'll give this up so you can have that. And he said, no, there can't be compromise. We have to discuss and, de you know, determine and even demand of ourselves to get clear to say, okay, this is who I am. This is what I want. This is what I want to bring to the party. This is how I want it to look. And then you get to have that same space and say it for you. And then the we conversation or the us conversation comes out of that. But if one person isn't fully expressed or doesn't get their needs met, then there's all there can be some resentment that gets built. Well, you know, I think there's a couple things around there when you, you know, when you talked about think tank and that it's, you know, it's much about maybe, you know, husband wife teams. It's really about like to your point is partnership. It is about, how, you know, where because I, I think about what we've got going on in Alberta, for example, in Edmonton, you know, and a great team in the retail business. You've got a great team in Quantum Speed. And the relationship that we have to have with our primary kind of the pointy ends of the spear, the general managers, if you will. And, you know, we spend a lot of time having great conversations and hard conversations, but we continue to have conversations to try and do our best to stay connected, to let those general managers, those that management team know where we're at. But we also have another side to that coin, which is they have their life going on and they got stuff that happens in their life and the ability to be able to communicate and hold space for those things that are happening, because that can take things 
off the rails. You know, I think about, you know, Sean, just, you know, <laughs> general manager, you know, he just had his, you know, his wife just had him and his wife just had their second child. Well, don't think that doesn't throw a monkey wrench into the operations of a business through a peak season because it does. But having said all that, because we're constantly communicating about and having conversations of what the gap will be and what gaps will be created, we're planning for it. It is not like there isn't a thought process behind it. Again, that clarity equals velocity and the team has continued on and Sean's having an amazing experience as a new dad. I'm sure I don't know that to be true. I'm sure he is like all new dads. But the point is that it's through conversation, not just with your significant other partner, but with your business partners and or your business team. And uh, we spent some time in Edmonton and we uh, celebrated with uh, a bunch of the staff that were able to get out and enjoy some time. But in all of that comes conversations and understanding. And then again, it's creating an environment and a culture of communication that supports where they want to go as well. And I think that's kind of how we've always operated from a business point of view is what are your outcomes? What are your goals? And how can we support you in achieving your goals while the business achieves its goals? And I think because of that, it's why we have such and have had over the years really long-term staff. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point. And it's the partnership side of it. You know, I went through a pretty painful split up with a partner um, in early 2022, just before the Olympic Games in Beijing. And what I got to was that where I wasn't possibly being a great partner or holding the space for her to be as, you know, fully expressed as she needed to be, I think going through the all the issues in 2020, it changed everybody and it changed the focus and it changed a lot of intention and uh, goals for many, many people. And I think what, what I might have stepped over is what was going on for her at the time. So to your point, I've only ever wanted our partners and our staff to to use the businesses as a vehicle to to get paid well, to do what they love to do, but then also to communicate to us what it is they need. And when that changes, and I think that's why I think tanks can be so important for both of us and for all, all the people that are registered, is that there might, uh, no, I'm not going to give it away, but to be able to have conversations with your partner that maybe are a little bit difficult. You know, courageous conversations in partnership sometimes are extremely difficult because of the vulnerability and you don't want to let your partner down. And I think that's what happened to me with my partners, she didn't want to let me down when her goals and her vision and everything started to change in her life. And instead of having the tools, and maybe I didn't catch it, to be able to bring it forward and say, okay, how can we work together on this? And how can I support you in getting the goals that you want while you can still, and why, you know, how can I take some of that pressure off of you? It basically just blew up and she ended up having to leave. And it was extremely painful. It was a long-term relationship. And I think if we go forward, as we go forward in these conversations, there are going to be times when people are going to have to leave your life. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom always said, you know, people come into your life for a reason, for a season or a lifetime. And we have to be okay with either one of those three things, a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And many times it's just for a season. And through that attachment, what I learned is that the conversation that should have happened, could have, would have, should have, could have, would have happened to me is now front and center when I talk to anybody that's in our businesses. Well, you know, and that's a lot of learning lessons, you know, often and sadly the hard way, you know, those lessons are painful and we take responsibility for what our side of that equation was. You know, there's the breakdown in communication and, you know, always leads back to the clarity, having courageous conversations, having uncomfortable conversations. There was a, a quote that you're probably familiar with that showed up for me, which is, what we tolerate, we validate. Now, the reason I share that is because when we came out of 2020, and I i don't know, I'm pretty observant, and I, it's the nature of who we are and what we do, it shifted the trajectory for, I'll be so bold as to say, most people in some way, shape, or form, whether it be emotionally, mentally, physically, I mean, we joked about, you know, how many people put on the the 19, you know, it, it really was that kind of a 
there were so many things that were the effect of it. You know, the divisiveness, the polarity. We've talked about it a lot. But it breaks down, it comes back to one fundamental, is that the communication needs to go up a notch. You have to have those courageous conversations. We have to reflect and look at what has changed and how have we changed? How has our views of the world changed? You know, there was a lot of... YOLO. I mean, that was the term that was used, especially uh, with younger generations, but I, I think it applies to anybody. YOLO. You only live once. And all of a sudden, there was this YOLO attitude, and soon people were spending or overspending their money. They were doing things they wouldn't normally do. I mean, that was that time shifted the trajectory a lot. So now, as we go into 2024, let's bring it full circle. You know, the question becomes, is when we reflect, can we see how we've changed? What has changed for us? What is our view of the world? When we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. And I know that this whole past four years now coming up has really had me change the way I look at things. How about you? What's your kind of thought on that? Well, my my mantra for when we were building the presentation for rain and for the completion exercise was hindsight, you'd be 2020. And if we don't learn from what happened from 2020 to now, then we are not going to be learning going forward. So that's what, what my theme was for that presentation. And it was really about, OK, so if we can only just go back to 2020 and to look at what positive things happen, what maybe things we want to leave behind and maybe some crappy things that happened that we have to deal with. I mean, my mom passed away in 2020. Thank God I was, you know, not the person that was going to sit outside in a parking lot and wave at her while she died. I found my way into that hospital. I made sure my dad was there and I put myself on the line. And I mean, to the point of detriment of, of potentially losing friends and family because of the stance that I took mm -hmm. early in that. But you know what was really cool about that? I realized that it solidified my values and who I am and what was important to me. And I was not going to give away my power whether it be to the government, to the mainstream media, or to the medical, pharmaceutical, ind industrial complex, or whatever, I was not going to give my power away. And you know, a lot of people did. And they looked at someone like me and said, you know what, you're breaking the rules, you're breaking the laws, you're evil, we don't want to be a part of you. You, uh, I even had a cousin said, oh my gosh, Stephanie's gone weird, she's gone dark, she's gone rogue. I'm like, I didn't go do any of that stuff. I stuck true to myself and stuck true to my values. And it shined a light on what I want to do going forward, not just in our relationship and our businesses, but in a bigger picture from a, a, even a, a social consciousness side of, of, of who I am and what we do. Because we've always had that as much as we're capitalists and, you know, try to live a very conservation, conservative type life. We do have a very strong social and, and, and heart centered way of creating so we live a life that way that I want to make sure that that stand stays true. And I'm, my hindsight is 2020, and I'm not going to compromise or my values or tolerate, to your point, things that aren't going to serve myself, us, you, our families, uh, our businesses, our, our partners. If I'm going to be compromising myself or tolerating things that I don't believe in, then that's a real energy leak. And it's harder for me to, to live that way than it is to just, you know, head down, ass up and just move through what it is that we have to do. Because I, as much as I think we've learned or I've learned over the last three to four years, I think there's more to come. I think 2024 and beyond is going to be a challenge. I think it's going to be fun. But the truth is we got to stick to our values. We got to know what they are. And we got to have a North Star or a guiding light going forward. And I think that when we choose what that North Star is, we choose what that guiding light is, we have to then line our values up underneath it so that we, we're going to get tested. That's the thing. And that's, I think, what um, we really need to discuss next when it comes to making these types of decisions. Yeah, and I want to complete on something there. And yes, you know, when we make a commitment, we're going to get tested. And that's an important point. I don't want to step over, but I want to complete what's something that you just said, that when we go into new eras, when we see a different phase of our life, a new shift in what's happening in our life, you know, we've really kind of hit it the next, the past few months where we talk about completion, and especially leading into the new year, we did completion exercises. We encouraged people do completion exercises. And the reason that landed the way it did for me as you were speaking was I remember that, you know, and another thing you often say is we never, ever, 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 five evers or whatever it is, know what's going on 
on for somebody else. And as you are going through the challenges, you and your brother and your dad, the challenges of your mom, I remember you phoning and saying, you know, mom's really uh, not doing well. I don't know if she's going to make it. And as we talked through it as a couple, I remember I said to you, I go, sweetheart, you make sure you're complete with your mom. You say everything you need to say. And you went through uh, whatever few day process it was of having conversations, making sure that you were complete with your mom. So this is a, a little bit of a story to, to share with others is that when we are in the kind of the fray, if you will, of the challenges of life and these relationships that we have. And in this case, you didn't know you, you, there was nothing that said your mom's going to pass, but it just didn't feel right to you. And you, she was struggling and. That was the discussion that we had, but that was about completion. Now, how many times have we heard the stories of people that weren't complete with a loved one that passed suddenly or passed unexpectedly or in a circumstance that they didn't have the opportunity to have the conversation? And I know it's a real extreme and I'm not trying to stretch it, but this is the way it is as we go from any era to a new era, the, the era of 2023 to 2024, the era of what was once a lockdown to the not lockdown and trying to get an economy going again. And we have to have completion and not carry all this baggage forward into the new year and throughout the new year. Uh, velocity comes from lightening the load. You know, all these phrases that we use, all these cliches I've shared many times that they're all there for a reason. You know, it's not the weight we carry that breaks us down. It's the way we carry the weight. And when we're complete, we're carrying it way lighter. It's not heavy. It's not this thing that goes, oh, I could have, should have, would have. Oh, what if I would have? And why didn't I? It's to say, wow, does it ever feel good? I'm so complete. Sad, but I'm at least complete. I said everything I needed to say. So that I wanted to kind of take that segment and well, I'm glad that, wrap it up. Yeah. Now, as we go Thank into you, yeah. as we go into the <laughs> the the mess we make when we're cleaning things up or as we're cleaning things up, we're blowing shit up because we're having to make decisions. What are we going to let go? What is not serving us? What are we tolerating that by tolerating we're validating? It's going to get messy and it could be relationships by the way. It could be a friendship that doesn't, you know, it's like a big energy leak and you stay in it because why? Well, because it's always been that way and you're now validating because you're tolerating and that's not a good way to go. As we make changes, however, this is this universal law. You're going to get <laughs> tested and you have to just be prepared for that test. And so when we make commitments, it's like making a commitment. Well, I'm going to go to the gym every day or I'm going to lose 20 pounds. And, you know, that literally the next day there's a party and, you know, there's, you know, cake and pretzels and, you know, popcorn out in front of you. And you go, oh, OK, well, I'll start tomorrow. And, and then on and on it goes. We all know that one. And, you know, I, I think about the way that we, you know, what happens when we make these commitments. You know, it's like we plan, God laughs. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, really? <laughs> You're going to do that? Oh, let me just see if that is really what you want to do. And so I'm, I know I'm carrying on a little bit, but let's talk about committing and being tested. So I know you had a little bit of a thought process around that. Well, I think every commitment needs to be tested. No different than when you commit to get married or you commit to, you know, growing a garden or you commit to something that is, you know, outside of you or outside of your comfort zone. So, for example, if you commit to something or if I commit to something and it's not aligned with my values, it's pretty clear I'm not going to stick with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going back to the story of my mom is that she was more important to me. My values were more important to me around my mom and the family than it was being liked. And one of the values that I have is is really about staying true to myself and having more intimate and a smaller group of friends or, or family um, relationships that are intimate rather than a whole bunch so what I got was tested on that. I got very much the messages that I was going to be rejected and that I had to be able to stay true to myself. So I put my values around being with my mom and not needing to be liked or included or accepted over anything. And to me, I was able to stay true to that. That was my guiding light, my North Star in that regard. So when you think about being tested, 
It is about embracing and inviting and taking a look around and go, okay, so here's my commitment. What's the test going to be? I may not recognize it as a test right away. And I may want to just give up or think that the test is there to, sh- to show me that the commitment is wrong. And I don't believe that. When I'm working with athletes and we're you know working backwards from an Olympics Games or a Stanley Cup championship or a, getting a scholarship at, at a university, when we work backwards from that, you're going to be tested because the goals that you set stretch you into becoming somebody you've never been before. And that's uncomfortable. And when you're stretching into somebody you've never been before, you have to do things you've never done. Mm-hmm. So the tests are showing up as possibly challenges or things that are trying to show you that it's the wrong decision. And trust me, we don't have that filter. And that's why we need people, powerful people, like-minded people. And, you know, I always say that I can't coach what I'm not. So if I'm going to be somebody that tolerates or, or needs to be liked or included, and I'm not aligning with my values, then what's happening is that I'm not going to attract the correct tests or the correct challenges that I need to do. Okay, so like growing a garden. So it's not, you know, growing some peas or growing some corn or some carrots and they're not growing fast enough. You know, they're not growing fast enough. So I go in and start, you know, hey, hey, are you growing? Are you growing? Well, no, that's not how it is. We get tested with weather. We get tested maybe with some bugs. We get tested with, you know, things that lack of knowledge. That's just feedback. That's just feedback. We have to know when we make a commitment, there's going to be a slow growth and there's going to be a gap before it feels comfortable. So all that to be said is, embrace and invite the tests. Notice which ones are there to challenge you and to make sure that you're on the right path, like the garden. You're on the right path. Just stay true. Stick to your plan. Move it forward and know the bigger the goal, the bigger the challenges and the bigger the tests. Well, you know, when we think about that, you know, for those who have gone and gotten any kind of extended education or any time you've got education, you go and you learn and then you're tested. Well, okay, so you pass the test or you fail the test or here's where you're weak. You got to go back and do some more work. So then you come out and you go, well, I've got the education. Well, guess what? Then you've got to put it into practice. And that education that you received is going to be tested in the real world. So if that's an engineer or a doctor or whatever the heck it might be, you know, you're going to be tested beyond your education. Your education is going to be put to the test in real life circumstances. And then, you know, we think about the reason that we share this and I want to kind of, I feel like I'm beating this to death a little bit, but there is a method to my madness around it. And that is this is something that we've adopted over the years. And I'm not saying we're great at it, but we ultimately always land there. And that is how many times are we tested in business and the strength of your business? You know, now 40 years later, I can tell you I've been tested. You know, when we look at ProSkate as our retail business, you and Quantum Speed at 25 or 30 years. I mean, it's, uh, you know, sometimes we go, this is a grind. It's hard work. You are being tested. The business is being tested. The model's being tested. Everything's being tested. And by the way, if you look at it from a perspective of, you know, the, the 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 old story, you know, what doesn't kill you make you stronger. When you get tested and you hold it as a test, you start to see where the gaps are and where you may need to strengthen things. And uh, we don't like it. We expect it to be easier. And I'm certainly guilty of that. I want it to be way easier. But ultimately, our strength comes from the tests that we put ourselves through, that we put our businesses through, that we sometimes even put our relationships through. So I think we beat that one to death, but I I really do believe that understanding that that commitment to the outcome, the commitment to the relationship, the commitment to being the best you can be, uh, it's going to get tested. And that's also part of the growth that you're going to experience by gaining the strength you need to get through those difficult times. Well, I think that brings us to our final R, doesn't it? What's our final R? We have... uh... Well, we said reflect, regroup, and redirect. Redirect. Yes. There you go. How do you want to reframe that as we bring it home? Well, I think there's a, you know, when we look at it from a business perspective, when we look at it from a physical, mental, emotional, it's always about redirection or not always, you know, you, you a subtle shift in trajectory may be all you need. You know, again, a golf ball hit 
you know, two millimeters out at the T is, you know, 300 yards into the other fairway. So, you know, trajectory is a big part of it. So a redirect is simply that reassess, reflect, what do I need to do? How do I need to redirect how I commit or how I am in my relationship? The, I find for me is when I'm looking at what I see myself in 2024, I'm looking at how do I need to show up differently? What is the redirection I have to take on in who I'm being, how I'm being, you know, I started several months ago and I'm going, no, you know, I want to get back physically into shape. I want to get my weight back to where it's way more comfortable for me. How I show up is becoming way more important for me. And I want to say not that it's more important, but it's more intentional. I'm being really aware that where I want to go requires me to be somebody that I'm not today, but I got to live as if I am that. And that's hard. That's hard. It's like, it's a mental kind of gymnastics that I sometimes go through and I use all the tools and I do all the things that I do, but it's for me pretty intentional. And I follow some people that I admire in terms of who they appear to be to me and I kind of model myself after what they're doing and say, shit, they can do it. I can do it. You know, that's how I'm looking at it. And I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I just need to go do that. So not easy. No, I love that. I think it's really important that you bring that up. Don't step over how hard you worked and how, you know, the mindset that, that you've put yourself into and the shift that you've made is inspiring for me as well. But don't step over the test. Right now, we're living in a society that everything's got to be about convenience. It's got to be easy. It's got to feel good. And you got to feel important. And you got to be heard. And you got to be seen. And you got to be this. And you got to be that. So all of those things are becoming distractions and tests around who it is you want to be going forward. And, you know, I'm guilty of it a little bit. But as I always say, you know what? If, I, if I'm if i going to coach it, I have to be it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not a physical coach, thank God, because my physical has gone down the drain in the last couple of years. But Getting it back on track is difficult, but it's worth it. And I want to be, to your point, I want to be the person that, you know, that brings those values forward so that I can be who I say I am in all seven areas of my life. I don't want to be the person that says, well, you know, it's convenient. It's easier just not to do it. I don't want to have to sweat. I don't want to have to challenge myself or budget or any of the things that, you know, we're being told that we shouldn't have to do because, you know, life should be easy. I don't buy into that mantra. I think it's bullshit. And I don't think anybody that listens to us thinks that any of that is true. So again, come with us on this trajectory that we're going on in 2024. And um, let's see where we can go. Let's see how we can build our life with a brand new way of looking at our lives. Fan diddly tastic. And on that note, we'll sign off. Thank you, Stephanie. That was fun. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. If you found value in the podcast, please take the time to rate and review and share with others, share with your friends. As it is my goal to always improve and to provide the highest value for you, the listener, if you have any comments, suggestions, or questions you'd like answered, please email me at ceo at raincanada.com. That's ceo at reincanada.com. I look forward to hearing from you. And until next time, Patrick out.